We're here in Sheffield after a call I got to ask us whether we were interested in covering a product launch. And to be honest, it's not something we normally do, but this wasn't a normal product launch, he said. This was literally a launch. So we had a little bit more of a conversation. It turned out that Roder and Schwartz were launching one of their new products into space. So we've come up to Sheffield to kind of meet up with them the day before and find out what's really going on. So go on, tell me what on earth we're doing here. We're gonna put one of our new handheld oscilloscopes into low Earth orbit on the back of a helium balloon. Why? Well, primarily for a bit of fun, um, but also to launch a competition. It's right. for innovative use cases for these portable products. It's going up in Sheffield, and then 100 miles could be, I mean, it could be Peterborough, yeah. it could be North Wales. Yep. Um, so we, we've got to expect to be literally chasing this thing. So the flight case is fitted with a uh, RF beacon. Okay. So we'll use a spectrum analyzer and a, a directional antenna. We'll be able to pick up this beacon. Kind of a bit like when you see people on sort of wildlife shows looking for those kind of tags around deers, necks and that kind of thing, presumably then, yeah? Exactly the same technology, yeah. So it should land somewhere nice next to a road, but we could have to go hiking, of course. Right. If it lands in the middle of five acre wood somewhere. Okay, and what about water? Are we worried about lakes and rivers and things? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the instrument's splash proof, but it's not waterproof. If it lands in water, it would be destroyed. And what are we hoping to see? When, it, when it's going up, you've got your oscilloscope on there. Is it actually taking any readings? Yeah, yeah, so it'd be measuring uh, temperature, um, altitude it will measure. There's an altimeter in there and it will also measure air pressure. Yeah, I'll be measuring them live on the screen. Fabulous. As it goes, and also logging it as well, so we can look at it later as well. If we get it back. If we get it back. Well, let's hope we do, that's what I say, okay? So let's, good luck for tomorrow. Cheers, Mark. Let's hope for good weather, and we'll yeah. see what happens. Fingers crossed. Next morning, I met up with Steve and his colleague Jitu, and we set off to meet Sent Into Space. This is the team who are going to help launch the oscilloscope. They are experts at launching equipment and interesting items into near space, so their plans should be in safe hands. Alex from Sent Into Space explained some of the more technical details about the launch. This is our little computer module. Uh, we've got GPS signal coming into the antenna here, uh, processed with the module, um, and then transmitted using radio frequencies so around 434 megahertz. This thing here will work on a satellite phone network um, and it'll give us a position update every two and a half minutes. They're the lines that are going to go up to the parachute and then that's going to go up to the, uh, the balloon above that. The balloon bursts because uh, as it goes up the, the pressure outside drops and as the pressure drops the balloon expands and expands and eventually can't expand anymore so it'll burst. At that point the balloon will be maybe 10 metres in diameter. You can see at the back here we've taken efforts to try and insulate the sensitive parts, the batteries. Uh, these leads coming off here feed into our sort of control module here, which is a, a plethora of um, sensing equipment. We've got a number of things on here. You can see this flying lead here is an external temperature sensor. We have um, GPS modules on here and uh, accelerometers, humidity sensors, pressure sensors. So essentially we have um, a little brain, if you like. We were off to the launch site. The rain shouldn't affect the launch, but the wind could. It's fingers crossed time. The launch site is surprisingly boring. We're just at the local park, which is confusing the dog walkers and the joggers. So we've got um, all the tracking systems being turned on. We're just going to test to make sure that we're getting signal coming through. Um, we've got our weights ready, which is uh, so we know how much gas to put in the balloon. Once they can lift those off the ground, then that's the right amount of gas and we stop putting gas in. Then we tie off the balloon, tie it to the parachutes, tie the parachute to the payload, turn the camera on, yeah. it's very quick. Turn the camera on, put it in, tape everything shut, make sure it's all sealed and nice and ready to go, final checks, and then uh, we're ready to get in the air. The simulations are so accurate that they choose the launch site to ensure that the balloon returns to Earth, landing safely in an unpopulated area. After all the planning that's gone into today, it's great to see the balloon finally launch.
Now the real challenge, and in some ways the maddest part, tracking it on its journey across country, finding it, and hoping it's come down in one piece. The technology being used has some complicated maths behind it, but the system developed by Sent Into Space streamlines the process and makes it fairly easy to use. So we've got one on each uh, payload, so yep. this one uh, behind here, hiding away, is the other one. Right, that's looking at the same the same thing. Oh, I see, okay, see great. The data coming through there. Yeah. Um, and then all I've done with this one is just bring it up onto a map. An amazing thing is Alex and Chris use a network of amateur radio enthusiasts to act as kind of secondary receivers of the transmitter data from the balloon. By doing this, they can increase the accuracy and get rid of any black spots in transmission data. Yeah, we, we uh, tend to announce, so we'll, we'll say we've got uh, plans to send a flight up um, at this time on this day, um, and we'll, we'll give the frequency and things like that, um, so that people can listen in um, and then contribute to the data. <laughs> as, you, as you can see, I mean, and this is a little bit of a, a predicted path yes. here, but that's, that's kind of more of a, a guess than a, what it'll actually do. But it, this is um, this is kind of the, the direction when we let go was blowing ever so slightly to the north, but basically yeah. east. As it's got into different layers of the wind, it's doing different things. So it's taking a turn for the south. So that means that the winds are blowing this way yeah. uh, low down and that way higher up, and it's kind of following that path. And on the way down, you'd expect it to kind of follow the opposite shape more yeah. or less. It is, yeah. So well, how did you know that then? We've just burst. Oh, and what, oh, so you do have a little indicator. Look at that. Yeah. So it's actually changed to like a, a, a. So the parachutes come out. We think we're about halfway there. We're not far from Tuxford, and it looks like the oscilloscope is landing at a location near South Kyme in Lincolnshire. The fingers crossed thing is, is that no one finds it and thinks that looks like an expensive bit of kit, which yeah. it is. Yeah. And we don't get that back. Well, if they do that and don't take the trackers off, then we know where they live. It's now within seconds down to 29 kilometres. You know... Is it, that because the parachutes don't have much resistance? Yeah, exactly, no exactly. So yeah. to start with, this will drop, this number will drop really quickly. You Ooh, know, 28, 4, 3, 7. How much? About 55 metres per second. Seven. So we just went down a kilometre between the last two numbers I gave you. <laughs> We last heard it three minutes ago and it was still just in the air, so it's dropped below tree level. Yeah. Um, so we're not getting a signal from it just at the minute, but as we get closer to it, we'll hear it again uh, and we'll go and pick it up. According to the GPS system, the oscilloscope has landed in a farmer's field. Richard Elkington, the farmer, didn't believe the story when the team were telling him at first. He looked amazed. But after a bit of convincing that his leg wasn't being pulled, he was as excited as we were about finding our space equipment in his field. The team had driven right to it. Search over, we found it. Oh, it's still running. It's still, running. <laughs> it's still working. We couldn't believe that not only had it landed on a relatively accessible field, but everything was still working perfectly. It is actually still measuring. It's still measuring? Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, look at that, guys. Look at that. Oh, fantastic. The actual screen is still measuring. That is amazing. This has truly been the most that unique and really exciting cool. product launch I've ever seen. Yeah. Great engineering and technology and fantastic people making something exceptional happen. Yeah.